Hello everyone, Kyle here from Wide Awake PH and in today's episode, we'll be talking about the Flare 58. The Flare 58 is a modern interpretation of a lever espresso machine. But the difference is, it has some really interesting and compelling features that bring it to the 21st century. Starting with this, right? You have a 58 millimeter port filter, which will allow you to use standardized or relatively common 58 millimeter espresso tools. It has a PID controlled temperature system, um, and it comes in this really interesting modern design. All of this for a relatively affordable price point in today's espresso machine market. Being a manual espresso lever machine, this Flare 58 allows you a, a very high level of control with your espresso brewing. Therefore, it is obviously targeted to those hardcore espresso enthusiasts who love to play around and tinker with their espresso brewing and achieve different flavor outcomes from the different beans that they use to extract espresso. Now that the Flare 58 has been out in the market for more or less a year now, the novelty is gone. So we can take a more objective look at this machine and see if it's really for you. So I think some things that you should consider when you're in the market for an espresso machine, particularly a lever espresso machine, are the following. You want total control over your espresso brewing. You want a workflow that is easy and simple and not so cluttered. You want a great analog experience, which, will, which we will discuss later on. You want the machine to look good on your table. So these are some things that I think you should consider before you're buying a machine like this. So to keep this review short and compact, let's answer three questions that I think will really help you with your buying decision when it comes to this machine or an espresso lever machine in general. So the first question is, does the Flare 58 actually give us total control of our espresso extraction? So this is a kind of difficult question to answer because there are a lot of details to go over. But let's do it. So for one, or for the most part, yes, I think the Flare 58 does allow you a lot of control, but not complete control over your espresso extraction. So it will allow you to play around with your brew temperature. It will allow you to play with pre-infusion, pressure, time. And the addition of a standardized 58 millimeter port filter will allow you to use a lot, a lot of tools available in today's market, which will allow you to explore which tools will help you with your espresso brewing even more. So in that sense, the Flare 58 is very much unlike my Lelit Mara. Because with the Lelit Mara or with your E61 semi-automatic espresso machine, you, have, you are fixed with pressure. You are fixed with pre-infusion. So the things that you can play with with your espresso brewing or your espresso extraction is much more limited. And I think that's what's so great and what's so hassle about the Flare 58. It's great in that it's an open canvas. You can really explore so many things, so many tasting outcomes with the espresso that you brew with this thing. Especially if you have lots and lots of beans and you have lots and lots of flavors of beans available to you. In that sense, your coffee area becomes a coffee playground. But on the other hand, because you have so much control, it can be very confusing, right? So what if you're brewing and then, oh, it tastes off. It tastes bad. Your shot doesn't taste the way you want it to taste. The problem is with so many brewing parameters, you also have so many things that you gotta troubleshoot. Was it my time? Was it my pressure? Was it my pressure profile? Was it my pre-infusion time? Was my tamp off? Was my distribution off? So many questions that you have to answer because you have so many variables that you have to play with. So that's one area of consideration. My, my biggest issue with the Flare 58 when it comes to espresso brewing is 
temperature. And that's why I'd say it doesn't really allow you complete control over your espresso extraction. It's because I don't think this temperature controller and this temperature setup in general is capable of allowing you to brew as hot as possible or not as hot as with a semi-automatic espresso machine like the Lelit Mara, which has its roots in commercial operations. So this, with this thing, if I preheat for a good 20 to 30 minutes, I can get my espresso to taste sweet and well extracted. Whereas this, if I do not preheat the machine properly, or um, even, even if I do the entire preheating structure that the manufacturer recommends, sometimes my espresso ends up tasting tart or sour or under extracted. The second question we have to answer is, does the machine have a great analog experience? I think the term great analog experience can be broken down into three subsections. Workflow, ease of use, and the machine's overall build quality. So let's go over them one by one. So for the, for the workflow of the machine, I'd say it's very good. It's very comparable to my E61 machine in that all the steps you have to do in order to brew espresso is pretty streamlined. The added friction though, is that you have to refill the water boiler each time you brew an espresso. And as you can see, that can be quite a hassle or quite annoying to do. The next section is ease of use. And in this aspect, I'd say yes, the Flare 58 is pretty easy to use. Um, it's easy to push and pull the lever, um, which we will discuss a little bit later. And um, because of the availability of the espresso tools because of the 58 millimeter portafilter, it makes your puck prep much, much easier or much more frictionless compared to had you been using the tiny um, basket on the old Flare 58, uh, sorry, on the old Flare machine. With regards to ease of use, the Flare 58 is pretty good as long as you follow these guidelines that I'm about to tell you. So you'd want to preheat this machine with the lever all the way up like this for a good 20 minutes to get this group head as hot as possible. And you want the portafilter inserted into the machine as well so that uh, you get this as hot as possible also. In addition to that, you want to use boiling water and set the temperature control to the highest setting, especially if you're working with light to medium light roasted coffee. Finally, and I think most importantly for ease of use, you'd want to set this machine at a relatively lower um, countertop or brew bar, not like this level or this height, because you'd want to place this machine lower so that you have the necessary leverages so that you can comfortably and easily pull down the lever. Because at this height, and at my height, um, it's pretty difficult for me to generate the necessary force to pull the lever down. Now let's move on to the next subsection, and that's build quality. So personally, I very much prioritize build quality when it comes to the products that I review or the products that I use. I think it's not enough for a product to be technically excellent when it comes to its results or, or its execution of its design parameters. What's really important for me with the build quality is that the machine is a joy to use. It's a joy to interact with. All the touch points are well considered and that it makes me want to use it. It makes me excited to want to use the product that we're talking about. And the reason why I bring this up is I think that's, that's where the Flare 58 is kind of disappointing. And I'm not so particularly happy with the overall build quality of the Flare 58. Why? It's because I think the major touch points around the machine aren't as well done or well executed as the shots of espresso that I can make with the machine. Examples? Sure. So for example, I hear the squeaking sound a lot. Uh, and you know, doing this each, hearing this sound each time you use it, it's kind of grating. It's not fun. 
other annoyances well the port filter that they ship with the machine is very lightweight it's very hollow and of course you can um, buy another one and replace it because it's a standardized 58 millimeter size but I think it's important to mention it's very lightweight and it's hollow also Look at this mess. <laughs> the, the, the power control or the power brick and the temperature controller are just not very elegant to look at, right? If you watch most YouTube reviews on the machine, the machine looks beautiful. It looks modern and elegant and sleek. And that's because they chose to hide the wires. But let's say you do, you do not have the optimal coffee bar for the placement of these things and you have to set them on the tabletop, then these, these two things are an eyesore. It's not nice to look at in the morning. It makes, it gives a feeling of clutteredness and mess that I think adds a lot of friction to the use of the machine. My other complaints or nitpicks would, would include that the, that the temperature controller feels very cheap and flimsy. Man, if you, if you have this in your hand, you don't know what kind of budget 90s thing this thing came from. It's, it's, it's really, it feels like it doesn't belong with the machine. Let's put it that way. Also, um, I haven't heard this mentioned in other reviews, but this group head, right, is wrapped with this silicon material. And when, you, when preheating this machine, that this section, this section of the brew head, gives off a very distinct rubbery burnt scent. And honestly, while brewing espresso, it just doesn't smell appetizing. And that certainly adds some friction to the overall um, use of the machine. And the final point I want to make in all of this is that, uh, yes, the workflow, ease of use, it's great, especially for a lever espresso machine but the problem is what if your first two or three shots right you're calibrating your espresso in the morning and they just don't taste good none of them taste good none of them are drinkable you throw them in the sink right away what then then you'd be very annoyed you put in so much effort right around one to two minutes prepping your puck pulling your shot exerting 40 seconds to one minute of constant pressure with your arm, by the way. And you have nothing to show for because all your shots taste bad. So that's the double-edged sword with this machine. If you get your shots to taste bad, it hurts your pride a lot. <laughs> but if you get your shots to taste amazing, then wow, all my effort was worth it. So that's something you should be considering because I promise you, I guarantee you that the very first espresso you brew with the particular bean you have will have a high chance of failure <laughs> because you have to accommodate many, many things, grind size, temperature, and so on. So you have to think about this before you invest in a machine of this kind. The third question is, is the machine aesthetic, right? Does your eye, is your eye naturally drawn to the way the machine looks? Does it look great on your kitchen or on your brew bar? And uh, that is a very, very subjective point. And that would be up to you to decide. Do you think the machine looks good? Do you think the Flare 58 would look good on your bar? Put it down in the comments below and let us know. But for me, uh, I understand what the Flare 58 is trying to do. It's trying to reinterpret a vintage uh, espresso machine, a vintage lever espresso machine, and modernize it. It has these very simple, very harsh, brutalistic lines, and it gives it a distinctive look. But personally, no matter what angle I look at it, because of all these elements that protrude around the machine, right, the temperature, uh, sorry, the temperature controller, the power brick, the, the gauge, it just looks and certainly feels like a science project. It lacks a certain element of polish that makes me want to want to look at it and want to want to use it and appreciate it for the machine that it is. 
So I'm certainly not a fan of the way the machine looks and feels. The Flare 58 is a machine that I really wanted to like, right? When my friend Miggy, shout out to Miggy, lent it to me, I was so excited to finally be able to get my hands on a machine, a lever machine that's affordable and can make this way of brewing more accessible to the market. Personally, I want it to succeed. But given all what I have mentioned to you with all the quirks of this machine, you know, we have to end this video with a kind of negative note that I personally wouldn't recommend it for daily espresso brewing. But on the other hand, you know, you can take this as version one of this product. Now we know about these things, the things that we don't like, maybe Flair can or Flair will most certainly improve upon the product, right? Maybe have a temperature controller somewhere here um, built into the machine with a knob or, or some way to actuate it, not a controller that is floating around like this. Maybe have the power brick integrated somewhere into the machine to give it a very clean look. And also maybe add a temperature gauge somewhere if they can. And you know, certainly with more iterations, more improvements, this machine can turn into a really great, awesome espresso machine and not just a budget espresso machine, an awesome espresso machine. So I'm looking forward to that day. Um, but for now, that's it for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching and please like and subscribe if you liked our videos. Thank you.